Hi, I'm Ritika Singh, Technical Marketing Engineer with Cisco Software Defined Access Solution. LAN automation, as we know, helps accelerate building of a compliant and error free underlay network for SD Access Fabric. With Catalyst Center 235 and 236, LAN automation has significantly been enhanced. From 235 onwards, we can now initiate LAN automation for up to five sites simultaneously and add or delete links, which gives a greater flexibility and an option to customize the network even at a later stage. From 236 onwards, the workflow will now support assigning smaller IP pools that becomes especially useful for deployments with smaller footprint. We can now customize loopback for the discovered devices during day zero or day n state. However, later modification of loopback for ST access fabric is not supported as of today. Let's now have a look at how this is done. Here in the topology, I have two sites as part of the same cluster for which we are going to initiate LAN automation simultaneously. I have a seed device which basically helps onboard new switches downstream and a PNP agent which is nothing but a factory default device. So let's start by verifying that we have reserved the IP pools for each site in the hierarchy, our seed is correctly assigned to a site in the inventory, and site credentials are correctly applied to. As mentioned, with the current 237 generally available release, we can now reserve smaller pools with slash 27, slash 28, and slash 29 subnet masks. So here in the network settings, I'm reserving a slash 27 LAN subnet for each of my two sites. Next, we will then go ahead and verify our seed devices are correctly assigned to their respective site and any config changes are synced to the inventory before we start. The seed or primary device can itself be automated via PNP or be configured manually. Finally, make sure site-specific CLI and SNMP version 2 read or SNMP version 3 credentials are applied as expected. Before we start, let's also make sure the PNP agents have factory defaults. If you are reusing existing device, you can make use of PNP service reset from 1612 onwards to delete any stale certificates, keys, and configuration files in one go. Okay, while that's taking place, let's go ahead and start LAN automation for both our sites. The workflow first asks to select a primary and optionally a secondary seed device from the site hierarchy and then the interface that physically connects to the factory default switch. We then go on to select IP pool along with other optional attributes such as defining ISI's domain password or enabling multicast in the underlay. We can also specify discovered devices host name prefix or simply upload CSV file containing host name and loopback information. After reviewing our selections, we then go ahead and initiate LAN automation for this site. Let's quickly do the same for the other site as well. We can see that both the sessions have kicked off simultaneously and for RTP site, which is what we started with, we can already see device discovery is in progress. Let's actually see some CLI action and our PNP agents getting configured. Here we see both the PNP agents have acquired an IP address on VLAN 1 from the temporary DHCP server pool created on the seed device. The logs also indicate reserving of VLAN 1 subnet and reusing of loopback for the seed device. Once the provisioning of discovered devices are complete, we will go to PNP section and see the status for our newly provisioned devices. We can also see these have been added to the inventory 
and are now managed by Catalyst Center. We will now go ahead and stop LAN automation for remainder of configurations such as converting layer 2 links to layer 3 and removing VLAN configurations to be completed by Catalyst Center. As discussed previously, with the new enhancements, we can now customize loopback for discovered devices before finalizing the deployment. The workflow will provide an option to review the session that was just stopped. The admin then can change the loopback of all the discovered devices. The Catalyst Center will then validate if the desired IP is within the range of the pool and available to be allocated to the device. It can be now verified that point-to-point -point layer 3 links has been configured and ISIS neighborship is also up. The logs comprehensively show the sequence in which configuration of links and then device cleanup took place. Let's look at the two new enhancements which were introduced from 235 onwards, that is adding and deleting links between already LAN automated devices. Starting with addition first, go to the session history, click on the LAN automated session for which you want to make the changes onto the links, either on the seed device or the provision device. Click on add link, select the source and destination devices between which you'd like to add the new links. Select the LAN pool and finally the interfaces on the two devices. Finally, review your selection and initiate the task. As the workflow completes, we see the point-to-point -point link configured with ISIS neighborship up on the newly added link. Now on to the deletion of links. Again, go to the LAN automated session, click on delete link, select the two directly connected devices that have been provisioned by a LAN automation. For this workflow, simply select the interface on one device and the UI will auto select the other side interface based on CDP information. Once the workflow completes, we will observe that interface have been defaulted. Lastly, we now get more visibility into each session's device configuration. For example, for the seed device here, we can see sequentially loopback address and ISIS config that were pushed, L2 link created, followed by SVI and DHCP configuration, and as the last step, cleanup of device configs too. And the same set of information for the discovered devices as well. And that brings us to the end of the LAN automation enhancements video. Thank you for watching.